Let's look at five different ways to format schedule poster text in Photoshop. So in this video, we're just gonna be looking at how you present the game info. We're gonna be working off this very basic template. We've got the schedule title at the top. We've got a player cutout on one side, and we're just gonna be populating the game info in this space to the left. For our first example, we're gonna make a new layer, hit T for our type tool, and let's just type out the date. So let's go with July 8th as an example game date. Let's blow this up. Decently big. The font I'm using today is Montserrat. I like it because there are a lot of different font weights that we're going to be using. So let's start with like a big date. Pulling up my grids here, command apostrophe is a shortcut there. I'm just going to line this up with a consistent two box margin from the left. Next, I'm going to duplicate this layer with command J, move it over to the right. And now we're going to type out the opponent and the time. So we'll type out verse. Madison, and we can left justify this, and then hit return, and we'll do 7 p.m. And now for this text, we're gonna shrink it way down. First, we're gonna bring it closer together, just by bringing up your character panel and reducing the line spacing. And we can also choose a different weight. So I like to have some contrast when I'm presenting this game info text, just to emphasize certain points. So we wanna emphasize the date, that's gonna be our biggest element. And we'll have kind of this lighter type for the opponent in time. Let's hit Command T to transform this. And I'm just gonna scale this way down so that it lines up with the full height of our July 8th text. And I'm actually gonna switch this to black. Let's make it as bold as possible just for maximum contrast and let's line this up. I'm actually gonna get rid of the, the VS. I kind of like the capital M lining up with the, the number. And if these seem too close together, we can just go back in and reduce the font size a little bit. So there's more spacing there. And we can change the color of this too, based on whether it's a home or an away game. So if you just select both these layers, click on your swatch for Indianapolis green, you can then duplicate these same elements, move them down. Maybe this one, we're just gonna use this light gray color if it's an away game on July 9th, for example. And then it's always nice to include some kind of home away key, probably at the bottom or away from the main elements. So if we just duplicate another one of these layers, we can type out home and then we'll use this vertical line and then type out away. And for the home, we can make it green and go to Montserrat Bold, just to show that distinction there. So you can imagine just a long list of these games populated. And if you wanted to mess with the spacing between these, the best way to make sure you have consistent spacing in your schedule elements are to group these individually into folders. Game one, game two, we duplicate these, have more games. Basically just by dragging it down, your lowest one to your lowest point, and then the top one to the highest point. Distributing the spacing evenly between these is very easy. You just have to select all these folders holding shift. With your move tool selected, you can click this icon right here to distribute vertically. So it's gonna keep that even spacing between all of your games. Next thing we're gonna look at is a way to incorporate the logo. So let's say we're playing the Minnesota Windchill in this first game. So we can drag in the Windchill logo. We're gonna do kind of a similar type type of treatment here. So let's make this a uh, different color. So we don't usually want to use the full color of the opponent logo. I would generally say make it white. If you have a dark background, you can make it gray or dark gray, black, if you have a lighter background. We're gonna go with gray for this example. So I just put a color overlay on this windchill logo. And now for our game info, when we're playing the windchill, we'll take our new layer, hit T for our type tool. We'll type out Minnesota, the date, July. Seventh. If you wanted to add the time, you can always add like a slash and then a space and do 7 p.m. And for this bottom part, let's make it medium weight. And you could give your text some hierarchy here. If you wanted to take this lower text and divide it by 1.6, that's kind of this ratio, approximately the golden ratio that I use to just determine hierarchy like this. If you have like a font you want bigger and then a font sort of subtitle you want smaller, 1.6 is a good ratio to go with. And now we can Command T transform this just to size it more accurately with the logo. Maybe we wanna reduce the space 
spacing between these lines a bit. And again, it's nice to distinguish between the home and away game. So if you wanted an away game, just duplicate both these layers, bring them down, and then choose the same gray color that we used for the logo. And same thing as before, grouping these into individual folders, duplicating out the games, and then swapping in the game info, you can distribute vertically to make sure everything is spaced evenly. Another way to kind of present this same info, but maybe do something a little different with the logo is if you want to put a box around the logo, like we can just focus on this top example. Let's make a, a green rectangle just so we keep the colors consistent or a square even. We can just drag out a square that's equal to the height of this text. And then we can just clip this Minnesota logo to this square by holding option, hovering in the space between layers and clicking. And for this one, we'd probably want the color of the logo to be white. And you can even blow it up so it's kind of like maximizing the space. But you can imagine something like this going all the way down, home and away, alternating colors would look really good. So next we can look at more of this concept of adding a block or a shape. So let's make a new layer and we'll just start off with a rectangle. And then we're gonna duplicate this rectangle and make another one below it. Let's take like a, a tiny little bit of space between it. Maybe this one is a little bit wider and a little bit smaller. So it's really up to you how you apply these different formats, but let's get into a couple examples here. I'm just gonna make one of these black. Maybe we make the bottom one black just because that is the other Indianapolis Alley Cats color. We can take this Minnesota Windchill logo again, shrink it down, put it about there. We can clip it to this top green rectangle. Again, holding option, hovering in the space between layers and clicking. And we'll again make this an all white logo just by adding a color overlay on our layer. And now for this bottom block, we're gonna type out some new text on a new layer. So again, July 7th, and we can make this font I don't know, we can do bold. If you also wanted to add the day, that's an option too. I don't know if this is a Friday or Saturday, but we have some room to work with, and that is another piece of game information you might want to include. So you can also space out this text if you wanted to add just like a, a little different style to the type here, something like this. I'm just gonna center it on this block by holding command, clicking on this layer thumbnail of our black box, getting those dotted lines, and then clicking our align tools up at the top. So this is a good example if you're just relying on like the recognizability of logos. If you're working for one of the big leagues, this is a very easy route to go where you don't need to spell out the whole team name, but the logo, you get the feel for what this game is. And if this were an away game, we can take all of our elements, duplicate them with command and J, drag it down, and then I would just make the rectangles, again, that light gray color. We can group this example together, make a, a new folder. We can drag over a lot of these similar elements. I'm just gonna hold option and drag these layers to our new folder. We can call this date text block. So I'm gonna take out this logo. We can change our rectangles back to green for a home game, or we'll do green and black. And instead of the date on the bottom, let's do the opponent. Let's say they're playing Minnesota. And then on top, we can duplicate this text layer, type out the date, July 7th. And we can use, uh, again, a bolder black font for this. A Little bit more blown up. And if you wanted to, you could also lay out the date you know, with just the numbers, the, the number dot number format. You can do a slash too. There are all sorts of options that I'm sure you are familiar with. Now the last example we're gonna look at is this idea of using a shape to indicate home and away games and keeping all the text consistent besides that. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's make a new layer and let's just type out Minnesota, July 7th. We'll do the same hierarchy that we did before by taking our lower text, dividing it by 1.6, and maybe we do the slash line with the time as well, 7 p.m. And I'll change this to green so you can see it. We can take this bottom part and again, make it a less heavy font. And we saw in our earlier example using the logo as the thing to kind of fill that space next to this game info. This time we're gonna use a shape. So very basic shape is a rectangle. So if you just go to your rectangle tool, make a new layer and draw out just a solid vertical rectangle like that. This can be a very effective way to just display a home or away game. And we can keep the text, let's just choose charcoal color. And we can have this the same going throughout the schedule and just change the color of this little label to determine whether it's a home or away game. 
So I'm just lining it up, duplicating this. An away game example would just look like, you know, using a, a light gray. And you can see how something like this would look going all the way down. Might be a little bit harder to quickly look at which games are home and away. Maybe here you also add like some text where you go VS for verse or at for an away game, further letting people know whether it's home or away. But again, just a stylistic choice on whatever you're feeling, whatever looks cleanest to you. Obviously, there are so many more ways to format text in your schedule graphic besides the five that we looked at today. Really, you can take some of these concepts and hopefully expand them yourselves. So like for this example, maybe you thought the, the rectangle would just look better as, as a highlight going over the, the team name up at the top, that is obviously, uh, again, a, a very viable way to present this information. But again, lots of different ways you can go about making these. Hopefully these five plus examples were helpful to look at as far as inspiration goes. Let me know if you have any questions as always, and I'll see you in the next one.